I wanted to call you. I waited till he got through this press conference. Uh, he played about the same old broken record in private that he did in public. Uh, we uh, tried to uh, get agreement on four or five points. Uh, we may have made a little progress uh, on non-proliferation. Uh, we're going to have Rusk and Gromyko work on it some more tomorrow. Uh, we may be able to table uh, agreement, uh, uh, but we're not positive. Uh, it looked like there was some uh, movement on uh, uh, arms limitation and on arms shipment and on uh, disclosure uh, and on uh, reducing uh, military expenditures, cutting their budget down. Uh, for nuclear weapons or for uh, offensive or defensive missile systems, etc. Uh, we both agreed in general principle, but he never would set a time and never would set a place and never would get down to uh, uh, really executing it. It's just largely conversation, uh, uh, pleasant, uh, no vitriolic stuff, no antagonistic stuff, no better stuff, uh, two or three little low blows below the belt every now and then. When you'd meet him the same way, why, he would uh, get back uh, to a normal level. Uh, he made clear they didn't want any confrontation in the United States, didn't want to fight us, didn't want to go to war, but on the Middle East, just one simple instruction looked like he couldn't move one inch away from it on anything. It must be complete, absolute, immediate withdrawal of troops, period, nothing else with it. That that's going to be the resolution. They could pass that in the General Assembly. They want us to support it there and in the Security Council and nothing else. And that unless and until that be done, there's going to be a big, great war, and those people will be fighting for 10 years, and that uh, they would have to support the, uh, the Arab nations. And, uh, that he couldn't understand why we'd want to support the Jews, 3 million people, and 100 million Arabs. And I told him that... Uh, uh, numbers are, uh, did not uh, uh, determine what was right. We tried to do what was right, regardless of the numbers, and we felt like that we'd have to take in uh, maritime passage. Uh, we'd have to consider uh, where they were before they closed the Gulf, and if they were going to go back to where the armistice line, were they going to have to go back to the Gulf of Aqaba as it was? He said, well, that have to be done later and take two or three years to work out all these other things. Wouldn't give an inch on that. On Vietnam, he said, we've got to stop our bombing. Uh, we've got to uh, pull out. That's what he said on television. And just get to get all of our troops out. That we're aggressor there. We're an invader there. We're a perpetrator of aggression. And not anything else will do. No substitute. Uh, we... Uh, exchanged some views, and I asked some questions of him in that connection, and asked him what would happen if we stopped our bombing. Uh, would uh, they uh, uh, talk, and if so, how long? And would it just be another Korea talk uh, to delay it, or would it be serious? Or would uh, uh, what would come from it, and what could he guarantee or underwrite or sure, or what did he think? And the net of it was just another line of, uh, stop your bombing, send your troops home, then uh, things will work out. And then after that, we'll start talking. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, <coughs> uh, but I submitted him some questions, things to think about, and his folks, I asked him to let McNamara sit down and talk to him about disarmament and give me the name and the date and time and place. He would always dodge it. He claimed to be for it in principle, but specifically he wouldn't. He claimed... He claimed that there would be, should be other elements taken in the Middle East settlement, but he wouldn't do any of them until withdrawal was effected. Uh, the Latin America thing, I gave him, told him there's six, seven hot spots that they're using Soviet material, Cuba was, that uh, we caught a bunch of them the other day in Venezuela, that they were giving us hell in the Dominican Republic and Haiti and Bolivia and half a dozen places that this is a very serious matter, and uh, Soviet equipment, and Castro-trained people, and so 
Give me one of those, will you? Uh, that we ought to... He ought to realize that we thought this was very serious and we're going to have to take action. The OAS was going to take action. Would he uh, give me his judgment, his comments, and what he could do about it? He said he couldn't comment now, but he was leaving for Cuba tomorrow, and he would he would uh, bear these things in mind in talking to them. Acted like he's a little upset with Castro. Didn't say so. Uh, the I guess that's about all. He uh, uh, he's very has an obsession on China and just said we better understand that they're very dangerous people and we better start talking about their exploding these nuclear weapons and that uh, they are trying to promote this. We're just their stooges. He kind of makes the same speech about Ch us as China makes about him. He said, uh, they all charged me with selling out to you. I said, you know what the Chinese are saying? You know what the Arabs are saying? I said, I want to ask you if you think I've sold anyone out. I said, yes, you sold me out, but you haven't sold them out. So you're staying off close to them. He laughed. I'd think that was about it. Uh, I thought he was uh, less vituperative and uh, antagonistic and vicious and uh, cutting and debating and argumentative uh, than I have uh, expected him to be. Gromico as Ben or Mikoyan or any of the rest of them. Uh, he's pretty stolid, pretty stubborn. Uh, uh, I felt like uh, uh, one time we got into Cuba some way, and I said, well, you talk about you don't believe in uh, us. You, you don't. You, you think that we let Israel have uh, some arms, uh, troop carriers, or whatever it was, these uh, tanks, these planes, I think he said. And I said, uh, we have tried. Uh, we have given very little arms. Most of our aid has been economic aid. And, that's not true of all the countries. The your aid there has been mostly military and uh, much more sizable than ours. Uh, then you've uh, helped others. Uh, I remember you've had to do many missiles in Cuba. He just flared up big, waved his finger at me, and said, I want you to know it. I opposed that. I fought that. I tried to keep Khrushchev from doing it. And when he did it, I made him back up and get out. And. Uh, uh, Funny thing, I've, I've I heard Khrushchev blame his predecessors and so on. And then another thing, he said, I want you to know we're grateful to the American people. We fought by your side. We, I was in Leningrad. I was Stalin's David for 12 years. We remember your great war against fascism, and you were with us, and you were patriots, and we awful grateful, and we'll never forget it. But he didn't show a damn bit of evidence of it in anything he said on any of these things. Yeah. And, I uh, held back about the meeting because I know these meetings you just stir up a lot of hopes and you don't get anything till the night he was due to go home and he put off a day and I finally made Russ go over it carefully to bring in with Thompson and then I got Russ to go over it with Gromyko and then I got Russ to go over it with him himself and he assured us it'd be substantive talks and we could take up any of these things and get his opinion. And I would say that in fairness as a teacher, I would grade him about a B plus on discussions on arms, that is, uh, offensive, defensive missiles, the ABM. And I think that when he gets back, he'll probably set a date. But he didn't assure me of that. Uh, he did assure me that they would talk uh, before he came here. But I just kept trying to get the time and place. I'd send McNamara, whoever he wanted, any place. We'd talk in Geneva, we'd talk in Moscow, we'd talk here, we'd talk to ambassadorial level. The main thing that I told Congress, I said, I've had him waiting three months. And I don't think I ought to go on this uh, with a big appropriation here if there's any chance of our uh, reasoning this thing out. But he never did say what he'd do. But I believe we made a little progress there. I believe we made a little step closer in nonproliferation. I think that he thinks that we're not wild men. I believe I made a good impression on him from the standpoint of being prudent and being firm and being determined and not being a freight cat or, or, or a bully either. And uh, he uh, made one or two passes. I don't want to discuss with anyone but you, but he said that uh, I want you to know that if you uh, do not deliver Israel here and 
uh, on this uh, resolution, uh, withdraw, and you cannot pull these fighters back like you do two boxing men in the ranch and separate the combatants. You pull them back to where they were before this war started, then I want you to know there's going to be a big war and there's going to be a great war, and it's coming soon. And I said, well, now, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, I hope that there's not going to be. And he said, if they, uh, they'll fight with their fists and they'll fight with arms. And I said, now, if you're saying that uh, the Israels and the Arabs are going to have some further difficulties, uh, I hope they don't. I'm going to do everything I can to keep them from fighting. I hope you do everything you can to keep them from fighting. But uh, if you're saying that it goes beyond that area and others will be fighting, then you're speaking very serious business and it's something that uh, uh, concerns me greatly. And I think it should concern you. And he backed away from it and said, well, I said that they would be fighting out there. And I said, well, I'll do all I can to keep them from fighting. hope you do, too. He made another, pa made another pass this afternoon along the same line. And I made him the same way, and he backed off from it again. I said I was talking about they would be fighting, he said. Uh, when this about this thing about uh, China, our, con our concern and his concern about it, did he make any specific suggestion or express any specific thought? No. He said we ought to have another conference on that. And uh, you better be real concerned about these explosions. I said, we are. He said, that's a, that's a matter that we ought to talk about at another conference. I said, we're ready any time. I'd be glad to have one every year and set time for it. We sack up every problem we got, every bilateral situation, and we could come, and you could come here, or we'd come there. Um, when you sent um, Dr. Thompson down here the other evening, I, he gave me a good briefing. Then I suggested to him the thoughts that I've been talking to some people. And I told him if he had a chance to, to, to convey it to you. And I said, as I study this problem, there's two in the Mideast, two problems, that have got to be settled before there's ever going to be any, even a, a modus operandi there in the Mideast. And one of them is this, these uh, water, and the other one is these um, refugees. Now, they can be tied up, it seems to me, if um, we could uh, set up a scheme of um, uh, a corporation, a world corporation, something like the, they started out with the Suez Canal or this uh, atomic uh, thing in uh, Vienna. And suppose we, our government, bought 51% of the stock and then we built uh, uh, in succession three great big uh, salt uh, uh, purification plants uh, on the, uh, there in the Levant, the eastern Mediterranean. And they uh, get to sell the stock to bankers all around the world and so on, and um, make it make the uh, water problem there. Uh, I mean, a, a water solution. Make it so attractive that both sides would almost be uh, compelled by their people to take it. For example, I've been talking to some of these AEC people, or uh, old scientific scientific people. They say that. Um, without too expensive a thing that you could uh, put uh, 500 uh, million up to a billion uh, gallons a day. And um, water uh, much of Israel, Jordan, the east, the, uh, Egypt, east of the Suez, and uh, some of Syria probably. So now, if we could uh, get up a thing like that, we not only would employ thousands and thousands of people and uh, bring lots of uh, land into cultivation. You see, we had that old Jordan River thing that um, Mary Johnson had developed, and um, the Arabs turned that down because they said they didn't want the Israeli to get any benefit out of that. But here, this would be, this would be 20 times the benefit of that the dams on the Jordan, and it would be so attractive seemingly to both sides that we might uh, have a we might create an atmosphere where they themselves could do something. I broached that to him this afternoon. I didn't get any comment. I told him that uh, our people had, uh, had talked to me about it just before the meeting. Yep. He said, well, uh, I just want to say this. I don't think we can talk about anything else to get the troops withdrawn. He said, we're referees in a fight. 
and you got to get your man with an nap and neck, and I got to get our man with an nap and neck. You got to separate them and put them back in their corner. <laughs> so then we can talk about other things. You know what he about they have to be about their man, though. They have to pick him up and revive him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference.